From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Royal Dutch Shell announced today it will suspend offshore petroleum drilling in the Arctic Ocean for 2013. That's right. Shell drilled last year in both the Chukchi Sea off Alaska's northwest coast and the Beaufort Sea off the state's north coast. But the company says problems before and after drilling, ending with the grounding of one of Shell's two drill ships, left in doubt whether the company could make repairs in time to drill in 2013. Environmental groups called the pause, quote, the first good decision Shell has made, end quote. The U.S. Geological Survey estimates that 26.6 billion barrels of recoverable oil and 130 trillion cubic feet of natural gas exist below Arctic waters. Now, Shell Alaska spokesman Curtis Smith said drilling could resume in 2014. Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski said Shell's decision to postpone exploratory drilling program shows that the company is committed to safety. Authorities are on the lookout for a 37-year-old Fairbanks man charged in connection to a domestic violence incident earlier this month. Norman Gallen Jr. was indicted last week on charges of kidnapping, first-degree assault, as well as second-degree assault. The crime allegedly took place February 4th in Norway, in Northway, near the Canada border along the Alaska Highway. The charges were classified as a domestic violence offense. A no-bail warrant for Gallen's arrest was issued at the Toke Courthouse. That's according to the Alaska Court System website. A check of court records says Gallen's criminal history dates back as early as 1993. State prosecutors have dismissed robbery charges against a 22-year-old Fairbanks man. Zach Rose will face federal charges instead for a credit union robbery that took place earlier this month in the downtown area. A grand jury in Anchorage handed down a federal indictment against Rose. He is accused of robbing the Mac Federal Credit Union on February 4th. Fairbanks police said a male suspect indicated he was armed and demanded cash at the credit union. The teller complied and the suspect fled with cash. Rose was later arrested at the Fairbanks Rescue Mission. He remains in jail on a no-bail status. A 57-year-old Fairbanks man is facing a possible life prison term for the alleged sex abuse of a young girl early in the last decade. Martin Zorro Bradley is in jail on a no-bail status, and he's charged with a single count of first-degree sexual abuse of a minor, an unclassified felony offense that carries a maximum 99 years in jail. That's according to Alaska status statuses. Last week, a local grand jury indicted Bradley on the charge he abused the girl in the Fairbanks area back in 2001. Bradley was arraigned in state district court on Tuesday. Now his next court appearance is set for March 5th. The State Commissioner of Commerce, Community and Economic Development spent the day in the Fairbanks and North Pole areas today presenting Governor Parnell's plan to get natural gas to the interior. At a meeting with the Lowell Group, Commissioner Susan Bell and Jean Terrio from the Alaska Energy Authority outlined the governor's legislation. That proposal includes $355 million for the entity or entities chosen to start the project. Bell said they hope to come out of the 90-day legislative session with approval of the bills related to the governor's proposals, so Ada will have a stake in it. Additional measures would be needed for bonding and financing. We are very excited about the momentum that we have in Juneau with the legislature, but it's really important that Fairbanks understands where we're at, that they continue to be supportive, and we move this financing package, package forward. You know, Daryl, I think it was really nice out today. What do you think? Yeah, it was really nice out there. You, you can tell spring is almost around the corner when things start melting. And it, it's it got almost a lot, there. Yeah, exactly. Mike, tell us, is it almost here? <laughs> uh, well, we never can get too cocky this time of year because things can change so quickly. But boy, it was magnificent out there today. Beautiful sunshine, temperatures warming up unofficially 32 degrees here at the uh, KTBF studios. And right now we're looking at 29 degrees at uh, Fairbanks, Fort Wainwright, and North Pole, 21 at Allison Air Force Base, a little cooler around Delta Junction, 15 degrees there while out to the west we're looking at temperatures very comfortable in Unana but quite chilly Denali Park nine degrees in the lower 48 things are calming down the snows are backing off around the Chicago area it looks like they're gonna have a few days for at least a little, little nice weather we'll tell you all about that with all the weather later, later on Daryl Stephanie all right thank you Mike now when we come back UAF dropped several degree programs due to lack of interest also in our military report responding to a simulated jetliner crash those stories are next. Next, excuse me, please stay with us.
This edition of the Fairbanks Evening News is brought to you by Northland Hearing Services. Better hearing with a human touch. Spadard Builder Supply. And by Usabelli Coal Mine. Cleaner energy, brighter future. Welcome back. Sixth grade students at Wood River Elementary School are doing their part to change their perspective when it comes to history. The students have recently studied history within Native American, including Alaska Native and African American culture. Today, a civil rights seminar was held featuring a diverse group of local leaders. Topics of discussion was Dr. Martin Luther King, the civil rights movement, among others. Students were also given time to question panelists on their own personal travels to the present day and the roadblocks they've endured. I think, I think it's just cool to hear everybody's stories and to know what it was really like back then and how it was. I just think it was cool. I feel it's really important because I know that these students are like very articulate, they're very bright, they're future leaders, and I want them to go out and, um, you know, advocate and do the work that um, needs to be done. I think it's important that they understand where people have come from so that they can um, help to support change in the future. Too little interest is the cause of the University of Alaska Fairbanks dropping a total of three degree programs. Last week, the UA Board of Regents approved the elimination of master's degrees in teaching and in mathematics as well as physics. In addition, the university will also no longer provide a master of science degree in general science. None of the programs have had any students enrolled since 2008. The University of Alaska System statewide also recently announced they would be dropping two controversial measures to offset increasing health insurance costs among employees. A UA Joint Health Care panel had endorsed a surcharge be levied on employees whose spouses were covered by UA insurance. They had also recommended a policy that all employees purchase insurance as to spread out the costs over a wider base. Northeast of Bethel, the Alaska National Guard conducted a joint search and rescue exercise last month to test the recovery operations for a simulated 737 plane crash. More now in this week's military report. And deploying them out of an aircraft with a team that's able to set them up and handle a mass casualty situation in an Arctic environment. The scenario is airplane crashes. We go out, we search for them, find the survivors, bring them back, set up a base camp, and treat the ones who need treatment. Stay close together, body heat. Body heat is here. The most important part is getting all the equipment and personnel out of the aircraft and to the ground safely. We have a lot of agencies working together and that creates a lot of gaps in communication sometimes. So closing those gaps, making everything fairly fluid, getting everybody to work together out here and everybody's come together to do their part. Get them on the radio and start working them as a transload option. Our objective at this exercise is to explore the ways that we can use UAS, unmanned aerial systems, in order to integrate with different types of organizations. I'm gonna initiate takeoff in three, two, one. We've got a remote site and we've got a rescue situation. What kind of data would be useful to have on site? High resolution maps. And in addition, we have the capacity to do real time exploration with infrared. So we put an infrared sensor onto the platform we're flying and then we're able to fly it around and we could look for survivors and we're able to go ahead and do some a little bit of searching from the air. Doing this exercise helps us bring all those things together and then employ them and see what works, what doesn't work. Most importantly, what we need to change. And every field encounter can be very different, but this has shown me and our other group quite a lot about really what does it look like and how does this gear function when it is on the ground. And it's been a really, really fascinating exercise to watch unfold. The Military Report is brought to you by Stanley Nissan. Innovation for all. <laughs> wow. 
what's there. happening. Mr. Lewis. Yeah, we got two Daryls and a uh -huh. Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Wow, man. And you guys both match. You guys are both wearing I appreciate blue that. Well, thank you. Yeah, oh, blue. how sweet. D squared. <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, what's going on this uh, morning? Lots of high school basketball on the docket this night as conference tournaments get set to ramp up at stake. Births to March Madness Alaska style down in Anchorage. Folks setting themselves up to go dancing, <laughs> dancing, all that, and some academic honors for Nana Coopsters. It's all next. Come on back. We'll see you in a couple minutes. <laughs> Brought to you by the Law Office of Rita T. Alley. Peace of mind through professional legal services. And welcome back, Interior Alaska. Daryl Lewis holding it down for the young man, Joe Cook. Hope everyone's doing all right. Let's talk some sports. Now, the Mid-Alaska Conference High School basketball coming to a close this week. Tournament bursts are what's next. And the Lathrop Malamutes paying a visit over to Geist Road late Tuesday. It's Lathrop versus West Valley. Enough said. Now, senior night for the Valley girls and boys. Ladies up first. And anyone thinking this would be a showdown of sorts this night would be sorely mistaken. The West Valley girls get hot shooting early from senior Callie France and sophomore Carly Marquez. The end never really in doubt in this one. Valley girls run away from the visiting Malamutes. 49-29 is your final. Afterwards, Franz and Marquez give the Mutes props for talent, but said this night, senior night, in our house, didn't matter. Um, tonight we played really, really well. Um, I'm so proud of how we played. Uh, we really moved the ball and our defense was amazing. It felt good to beat him again um, after last season. You know, all we can do is come together after leave, having Hannah leave. And we just came together as a team and finally worked together. And this is what I, this is the team I know. And part of the Valley Girl attack centered around defense, keeping Jasmine White and Arisha Talley out of the lane, making others score. And oh yeah, shutting down six foot three inch freshman Ruthie Hebert. Senior Marina Washburn says that fell on her shoulders and hers only. Reach for comment, she says, mission accomplished. You know, Ruthie, it's, it's hard to, you know, I'm a little vertically challenged in the post department. So, you know, Ruthie is an amazing player time we play late up she's in our game plan because you can't ignore her otherwise you're gonna get beat so my whole goal was tonight was I don't care if I don't get a single rebound or a single point but Ruthie I'm gonna shut her down and um, you know didn't you know not a total shutdown which I would have liked but still I feel proud of our team as I mean we played amazing I couldn't ask for anything else on senior night Gotta love it. In boys' action, Lathrop got double-figure scoring from Tremont Washington, Gabriel Cunningham, and Kyle Carlson on their way to a 62-51 victory. The Malamutes led the entire game. Freshman Daniel Hornbuckle led the Valley Boys with a game-high 22 points, and Lorenzo Graham added 12 points, 7 boards, and 3 helpers. West unable to get much in the way of scoring from anyone else, much to the delight of Carlson. Hey, you know, it was in front of a big crowd, and we, we took it to our advantage. We're like, hey, we got a crowd, let's play for him. So we went out there and played tough defense, got a lot of steals, got a lot of assists, worked the ball around, and that's how we've won. You know, just get a stop, get a stop every time down the court. We had our mind locked on Zoe and Jason and Danny, so we were just trying to lock him down. We knew if we shut them down, the team would be good. 3A Aurora Conference Tournament action gets underway tomorrow morning down in Valdez. For the ladies, the two-time defending conference champion, Hutchison Hawks, looking to make it three in a row. Meanwhile, the defending 3A state champion, Galena Lady Hawks, seeking the repeat. And meanwhile, on the boys' side of the Aurora Conference, the Monroe Catholic Rams, 22-1 on the season and a perfect 10-0 in conference play, seeking to not only win their third consecutive conference title, but looking to defend their 3A state title as well. They served notice last Saturday evening, easily dispatching the Hutchison Hawks by a score of 76 22 over Red Boy Lou Hall. Rams exploded out of the gate with a 19 2 lead in the first quarter. Never looked back. Heading up on the hill, my alma mater, the University of Alaska. Fairbanks. College basketball in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference today giving all conference academic love. And both the Alaska Nanook men and women 
get recognized. Junior guard Marissa Torek from tiny Kiana, Alaska, up there on the Northwest Arctic Borough is the lone Nanook woman garnering honors. A Torek, a business administration major, holds a 3.55 GPA and has played in all 25 games this season, making two starts. She averaged four points and one rebound and has made 30 three-pointers this season. Three members of the Alaska Nanook men's basketball team were also named senior forward Zach Nawaka, junior center Sergey Puzar, and junior forward Stefan Tietza were among those honored for their academic excellence. Now, to be eligible for the academic team, student athletes must at least have a 3.2 cumulative grade point average, earn a letter, and be completing at least their second year of eligibility at the current university. A combined 53 student athletes for both men's and women's basketball were named to the all academic team, included in the bunch, 30 women. Gotta love the ladies. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Glad you could roll with me for a spell. For more KTVF Sports, log on to Twitter, YouTube, WebCenter11.com, download our mobile app, whatever's your flavor. But for now, don't go anywhere because my man, Mr. Mike Schultz, has your full weather forecast coming up. He's next, and we'll see you. Welcome back to Fairbanks Evening News, everyone. Mike Schultz with you once again for a look at weather, starting off with another beautiful photograph. Actually, this one is pretty interesting. An animal photograph. This was uh, Christopher Reed caught a moose in his backyard. We'll call it Moose on the Loose, and we've seen a lot of those around town. If you have a photograph to share, by all means, send it to Mike Schultz at ktvf11.com. Here's what's going on as far as the numbers go. 32 degrees. Wow, that's a high for today. The low last night, 10 below. Record high, 1928. Record low, 1932. 51 below that day. Sunrise, 807. Sunset, 604. Not quite 10 hours of daylight. We'll go over that tomorrow. That's a gain of seven minutes from yesterday. Here's our satellite picture. We're looking again at the moisture flowing across from the east to the west. All of it staying south of the Alaska Range. Although some of those clouds might work their way up and give us a few flurries tomorrow night. What's going on across the rest of the state? Fairly quiet except for southeast Alaska where it's raining and snowing and they have clouds across the uh, Gulf of Alaska. Nice weather up and down the west coast. Nome at 22 degrees above, 11 below and some snow flurries at Barrow and 16 degrees at Fort Yukon. Clear skies there. Lower 48 weather. Things are quieted down considerably from yesterday. Still some showers over the Pacific Northwest. The snows are Moving out of the Chicago area, they still open the uh, satellite and radar. You can see here the circulation of that storm system really well defined, but it's really breaking up. Good news for the folks that have received close to two feet of snow in some areas. Now, as far as the overall outlook for this weekend, again, the cold air will be pulled down across much of the eastern half of the country, so maybe more storms in, uh, in the future for the folks there with another storm moving across the Pacific Northwest. Well, back to Alaska for tomorrow. In the northern sections, clouds and flurries for Barrow and Nome, and mostly clear skies at Fort Yukon. Here in the interior, nice weather until the evening. We're looking at possibly some flurries moving in by uh, late evening. And as far as southeast Alaska, the mess continues there. Mixed rain and snow for Juneau. Heavy rain in the Ketchikan area. And over the southwest part of the state, we'll be looking at light snow for Cold Bay, mixed showers in Kodiak, and snow showers in Bethel. And over the south central regions, it looks like uh, snow showers will be scattered across all of the region with little accumulation expected. Well, yesterday was the opening of the ice park, and I talked with Dick Brickley yesterday. Well, today, I'm talking with folks that helped drive the ice park, a couple of volunteers. Here's their story. So your name is? Kathy Redford. And you're from where? Fair Play, South Carolina. Wow, and you are? Jana Reinhardt from Lafayette, Indiana. Now, what inspired you guys to, to come to Ice Alaska? Being here this summer, talking to Dick. <laughs> He's never does it. And he asked us to come back and see if we wanted to work this winter. So here we are. Great, great. Yeah. Okay, now the other thing is uh, you're, you're, you're assigned your responsibilities are, are specifically in the computers, right? Right, I'm with the webcam department. And you are miscellaneous. Right now, right now I'm on paintbrush <laughs> detail, so I don't know where I'll be, but wherever they need help is, is fine with me. Okay. They couldn't make it without the volunteers. Tomorrow, Dick will be back with us once again and tell us about more great things that are happening at the ice park. All right now, it's time for our kids' weather. This week, talking with the kids from Weller Elementary School. Tonight, a young lady has a weather question for me. Hi, I'm Carmen from Miss Black's sixth grade class at Weller Elementary, and this is my question for the weatherman. 
I wanted to know what place in the world has received the most snow. In the year 1959, it snowed and it snowed and it never stopped snowing in the Thompson Pass area. 941 inches of snow, 70 feet of snow. That is definitely the highest snowfall ever recorded in the world. So there's your answer to your question. And tomorrow night, the teacher will be here with an interesting weather fact to share with us. Okay, here's your forecast for the remainder of the night. Not as cold as last night, 9 degrees below zero, scattered high clouds. And tomorrow, we're looking for more clouds moving in with some flurries developing by late afternoon, early evening, 20 degrees for the high. But the temperatures will continue in the five-day period above normal, except for maybe Saturday cooling off just a little bit, but then rising back nicely by Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Overnight lows will also also be once again above normal for this time of year only five degrees below which is really comfortable and uh, no precipitation expected except like I said maybe possibly Friday we might see some uh, snow shower activity but right now it looks very very weak good for the ice sculptures yeah another great yeah. forecast I like Mike. that 32 yeah. above right now oh, it's incredible yeah go outside in my t-shirt watch out for the streets so they could be very slick obviously Okay, that'll wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. As always, we are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, the combative hearing at the Supreme Court today over the Voting Rights Act. That's next with Brian Williams. And don't forget, Saturday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., the 2013 Interior Wedding Showcase is happening, featuring over 40 vendors, fashion shows, and door prizes. Mark your calendars now so you can show up there and have some fun. And you and J.R. Lewis are going to be hosting that. Yep. That'll be a lot of fun. That is JR to be a great. I am very excited to host with JR. He yeah. is a fun time. Well, that will do it from all of us here at the News Center. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you back here at 11.